Welcome back to the flagship studio. I'm here with Ponzi Travis Fabet from Inari, one of the companies in flagship's agricultural portfolio. Ponzi, so happy you're here at JPM. When people think of CRISPR technology, they generally think about applications in human health, but it's hugely important for agriculture. Can you explain what Inari is doing? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, for as we think about this as a very powerful tool, but um, how do you actually get to the next level that is not only about healthcare, it's about impacting a broader set of the objective of sustainability for the planet. So when we think about it is actually, in fact, if we could use this technology to go back to the very beginning of the food chain, which is about seeds, which, which is about genetics, mm -hmm. how do you use that to unlock the full potential of the seeds? So the seeds can take less land, less water, and less fertilizer. That's how we think about it at Inari. And right now, I would say climate is probably issue one on so many people's minds. Are the applications around for those seeds and that technology global in nature? Um, certainly, it's global. And in fact, um, we would argue that uh, we don't have time anymore mm -hmm. to, to wait for this to be resolved. Um, and everything that we do here, we have to think about new way of solving this challenge, right? So when we think about this CRISPR technology, we, we think about it as actually, in fact, we combined the two intersection of technologies. One is the AI power predictive design that we use to understand the complexity of the genomes of the crops. Okay. And by the way, on the first one, let me tell you more that genomes of the crops are actually more complex than the human humans. genomes. I wouldn't think that, was, right? that would be the assumption. So yeah. that's, that's one part. Then after we know where we need to make the changes to the genome of the crops, then we use CRISPR gene editing to actually make the changes okay. to the natural genes by themselves. But here comes back again that genomes of the crops are much more complex. Therefore, to actually resolve the problem of the, the, the land, the water, and chemical fertilizer, we need to work on multiple genes at the same time. So what is unique about Inari is you take CRISPR to the next level and work on multiple genes of the crops in order to actually solve this complexity of, of the sustainability. So we combine that AI together with the multiplex gene editing, and that's what we're doing. And who else is in this space with you? Who are your partners? Who are your customers? What is the market like for this kind of technology? So the, the, the customers of us are seed companies. Um, okay. So think about it as for us is, uh, is currently $60 billion market. Um, we believe that what we are doing now is going to actually address the real challenges of the planet. And that will drive up the market to be more than double by the end of this decade. That's how we see it. Um, and that's really the critical part because seeds determined how much resources that farmers need to use, right? The potential, true potential of the plants, true potential of the seeds, that's essentially what we're doing. And are there others in this space and is there a unique pathway that Inari is pursuing that's, that's somewhat different or how does it relate also to GMO? You hear a lot about GMO. Yeah, so I'm gonna answer your second question okay. first. Uh, what's the definition of GMO and what, what are we doing that is different? So GMO is essentially um, genetically modify seeds whereby you insert foreign gene. Ah, okay. so whether foreign gene would be bacteria, yeah. whatever. So what happened with what, uh, foreign gene is when you insert the foreign gene, you can deal with only one, a ma maximum would be two genes. Okay. So once you do that, there's a limitation of what problems that GMO can actually re solve, right? So therefore, yes, it's still good tools whereby you solve the problem of insect control, mm -hmm. weed control. But again, coming back to where gene editing is, uh, what we see is it's more powerful because we work with the natural genes. You're editing the natural gene natural, of the crop. Exactly, when we edit soybeans, okay. we touch only natural genes of soy. When we do okay. corn, it's only corn. When wheat, only wheat. We don't, we don't actually insert any foreign gene. And that's the definition of gene editing. Got it. So once you touch only the natural genes, then you can work on several genes at the same time. And the food uh, is still, it, uh, the food that results from that seed is still with the core genetic makeup of the seed. It's just altered. It's not, it's not inserted from something that's, that's outside. That's what we gotcha. do, right? So, and then the next level of that at Inari here is, 
how you make the changes there is not only about removing the gene, natural mm -hmm. genes, we can actually um, control the expression of the na natural genes okay. as well. That's what we do, which is mimicking the nature. Um, the nature can actually do this, but the problem is we have only one lifetime yeah. to solve this problem. Do we want to wait for nature that may take um, two lifetimes or three lifetimes or 10 lifetimes? Um, or do we want to actually do uh, what nature could do in a better way, in a faster way? So that's what we are solving. You've touched on the urgency around climate change. How many employees at Inari now? Um, we are roughly around 270 people. 270. Yeah. And what would you say is core to the culture of Inari that's allowing you to scale these kind of technologies and address something so pressing for the planet? Yeah, it, it's uh, the the word that we we use. Um, it's it's a lot of words in there. The culture, just to simplify it, is hard because um, it ingrained to what yeah, we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we will use the combination of um, bold, bold, collaborative, collaborative, open, open. Diversity. Diversity. So there, those are the things. Okay. Uh, that, Diverse, open, bold, and collaborative. Um, so integrity is also oh, part okay. of that. Okay. So we look at this as the culture of we 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 have all this just go. And For sure. we want to go we want to go solve this because the impact that we are going to create is huge. And the reason why some of them you actually have contradicting things bold and collaborative at the same time, right? And then, yes, we want to actually be open, but we want to have integrity, and we want to have integrity at the same time, mm -hmm. and we want to have um, diverse mm -hmm. thinking. And let me give you, um, yes, a lot of people talk about diversity. We're not talking about, about diversity in the sense of, of, of certain things. We are talking about diversity of thoughts. Mm -hmm. And you would imagine that our company would have a lot of biologists because we work on plants and interestingly actually in fact you thought that a lot of people come from act no our scientists which is majority of our company one third are from agriculture okay one third are from academia and one third are actually from somewhere else especially pharma oh okay All right. uh, with that 270 people uh, 50 50 male female, okay. roughly 29 nationalities. 50 50 male female is not typical in, in, this, industry. in this industry, so bravo to you Thank on you. that. 29 Speak nationalities. On behalf of all the women in biotech when I say that. Yeah, 29 nationalities. 29 nationalities. That's, wow. That's how you actually. One in 10 uh -huh. yeah, from a yeah. different country. So, so that, that's now you get yeah. to the point whereby we got a lot of breakthrough thinking. Yeah. Um, so rather than thinking the way, sometimes we actually use ke chemistry to solve biology problem. Got it. So that's the example. My last question, you know, our theme here is bigger leaps. And when you think about the bigger leaps on deck for an hour, you think about yourself getting ready for those bigger leaps. If we were in these chairs, say three to five years from now, JPM 2028, what are the big leaps that Inari will be here talking about then? Yeah, it would be about, um, I don't have to debate that whether we're trying to solve uh, feeding population or we're trying to actually talk about the climate change, they can coexist. It will be understood to be both possible. Possible, coexist, and our products will be on the way there in the, farm, in the hands of farmers to essentially, through the seed companies in order to address these two things at the same time. Some big insights here. We are gonna be able to feed the planet and protect the planet. And that as complex as we humans are, we're not as complex as soybeans. Thanks for joining us in the flagship studio. Ponzi, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much.